What you're seeing right there uh, happened late last night. Wall Street re uh, Journal reporter Evan Gershkovic and Paul Whelan were greeted by both President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris as they stepped back onto US soil for the first time since being released from a Russian prison. So two of the highest profile prisoners that were released in this complex ven uh, venture. There were four Americans that were held um, in Russia. And this is effectively considered to be the largest prisoner exchange since the Cold War. But this was a really big deal, both literally and figuratively. Figuratively, very significant to get these prisoners back after so long, but also big and complex in literal terms as well. The deal involved 24 prisoners and at least six countries. You don't typically see so many countries coming together and working to hash out these long held differences. But it came together after months of negotiations at the highest levels of government in the US, Russia, and Germany. And speaking at a press conference yesterday in the White House about this deal, Joe Biden said, multiple countries helped get this done. They joined a difficult, complex negotiation at my request. It was a feat of diplomacy and friendship. And also spurred Vice President Harris talking about the importance of having someone who values diplomacy in a perfectly cogent comment that the right wing has pretended they don't understand. So a lot of purposeful misunderstanding coming out of this. Hey, don't scroll away. Come back, come back, because before the video continues, we just wanna urge you to lend your support to TYT. You power our honest reporting, you do it at tyt.com slash team and we love you for it. Obviously, Joe Biden presided over this. It was multiple countries, but he helped to get it done. And that would seem to be a good thing, but there are a lot of Republicans rushing to the media to attempt to explain in a variety of ways why it's not actually good news. We're gonna start with JD Vance. Look, I think it's great news, at least what little we know. We certainly want these Americans to come back home. It was ridiculous that they were in prison to begin with. But we have to ask ourselves, why are they coming home? And I think it's because bad guys all over the world recognize Donald Trump's about to be back in office, so they're cleaning house. That's a good thing, and I think it's a testament to Donald Trump's strength. Yeah, I think it's a very strong testament to Donald Trump's strength that while he's off talking about Hannibal Lecter and sharks, Joe Biden is getting actual things done. Including at least one prisoner that's been a prisoner back for at least two years of Trump's presidency. And he's had a lot of tweets about how he can save these people, but he didn't actually do anything about it. So JD Vance would have you believe that like with the, the growth in the stock market, somehow the guy that's not in office deserves all the credit and he's not even alone in that. Here is Doug Burgum. So on a personal level, it's a day it's a day of gratitude and celebration. But on a larger scale, again, the Biden administration is clear. The reason why why Russia wanted to do this deal now is that they think that President Trump's going to win, and they don't want to deal with him. Biden's track record on these hostage negotiations. I mean, you go back just to September of last year, paying six billion dollars to the Iranians for five hostages. I mean, he he put a price tag on every American's head when. He he did that, made it less safe for, for anyone traveling abroad when he does that. Okay, so there you have a combination of two things. He says that you know people believe that it's going to be Donald Trump and he should get the credit again. Every, all the all the bad stuff goes to Trump to Biden. All the good stuff, even though he's not in office, goes to Trump. You can see that there. But also saying that well, this actually isn't good news because the fact that he succeeded in getting the hostages back means that there's just going to be more hostage taking. And Doug Burgum has been consistent on that. He spent the years of the first Trump term responding to all of Trump's negotiations in that same way, saying this makes Americans less. Safe. Uh, Sean Hannity, by the way, said the same thing on his radio program. And I want to turn to Donald Trump, who thus far is not directly claiming credit for the deal. That'll happen sometime in the next 24 hours, uh, but he still has thoughts about it. Well, as usual, it was a win for Putin or any other country that deals with us. But we got somebody back, so I'm never going to be challenging that. Uh, it wouldn't have happened with us. We would have gotten it back. We wouldn't have had to pay anything. We wouldn't have had to let some of the great killers of the world go because that's what's happened, as you know. And the deal's very complex because it just came out, so nobody understands the deal yet. And they make it complex, so you can't understand how bad the deal is for us. But we got him back. And we could have had him back. We should have had him back a long time ago. It should have never happened. It would have never happened. He shouldn't have been taken in the first place. And it would have never happened with us if I was president. So it was more than prisoner swaps? It was something else? I have no idea what they did. Uh, I just know they, they announced it's a very complex deal. That's usually a way of saying we made a bad deal and we made it complex so nobody understands it. 
Okay, so two quick fact checks. First of all, he doesn't understand it because he's not the president. I know this is gonna come as a shock to a lot of Republicans. He's just a low T loser ranting about fictional serial killers at rallies. He doesn't, he's not involved in any of this stuff. That's why he doesn't get credit for it. Although in his defense, were he president while it was being done, he also wouldn't understand the deal. And I also wanna mention there that he said, we would have gotten it if it was us and we wouldn't have had to give anything. And we certainly wouldn't have given any killers over. Little fact check on that. In one of the negotiations during Trump's first term, three of the highest ranking Taliban officials were given back in one of these releases. Who knows what they went off to do. In another 200 Houthi militants were returned. And again, Hmm. that's how these deals go. We got people back, maybe that was a good deal. But he did that, for all we know, they're engaged in hostilities right now in Yemen. And so it's, we're not talking about hypotheticals with Trump. He has a track record, he is lying about what he has done. Or maybe he doesn't remember, maybe he honestly has forgotten what happened just a couple of years ago. What do you think? Yeah, so first he says it's complex, then he says I haven't read it. How do you know it's complex if you haven't read it? I bet it's not complex to me. I bet if I read it, it'd be fairly easy to discern what happened. <laughs> so number one, you don't know what the hell you're talking about because you don't even know what's in the deal. And then if you did read it, you're not wrong that you would think it's complex. Remember, this is the same guy who came out early in his administration was like, nobody knew that healthcare was this complicated. <laughs> yeah, brother, we all knew except you because you're not that bright. Um, so now, uh, in terms of the hypocrisies, I can't stand it. I mean, look, I, I often address MAGA on the show as if they're watching it, some of them are, but like, does it not bother you that he keeps saying they would have been released under me? Paul Whelan was taken in 2018, mm-hmm. so you're in, you had your whole term to get him out, and yep. you didn't. Well, not your whole term, but half your term, right? So you had two years, why didn't you get him out? I would have gotten him out, but you didn't get him out, right? And he's not the only one, Trevor Reed, also taken earlier. And during the Trump administration, could have gotten him out, didn't. You know what that makes you? A failure. And on top of that, guys, the reason I address MAGA is like, are you guys, I'm amazed by you guys. So you're not at all bothered by these outrageous lies? And this thing that is clearly not true that he could have gotten them out. Or is it that he could have gotten them out and just didn't want them out? Didn't care, who cares? We had Americans taken by my friend Vladimir Putin. I'm not gonna bother right. taking them out, right? I don't know, but it's not that he could have gotten it done because he didn't. And and so the other hypocrisy that drives me crazy is Biden couldn't get these guys out. This is what they were saying until yesterday, right? Uh, he's so weak, he's weak, he can't get them out. He, oh, he got him out, I can't believe he got him out. God damn it, why did he get him out? Okay, he shouldn't have gotten him out, it was a wrong negotiation. So which one is it, which one is it? Like, Do you care about being principled, do you care about being consistent? I know the answer, no you don't, you don't care, you just wanna criticize them. But then own it, own that you don't care about logic and that you would have criticized them either way and you're totally unfair. If you can live with that, no problem, okay? Mm-hmm. And so, and when it's a negotiation, you get something, you give up something. That is how negotiations work. There is no magical fairyland where you go and go, I'm so deaf, just give me everything I want, and I'm not gonna give you anything in return. That's not art of the deal, that's an art of a fantasy in your dumbass mind. Franny. Yeah, I mean, he usually does give uh, foreign leaders, uh, adversaries, whatever they want with no preconditions, like sitting down to tea with Kim Jong Un, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that that was just like, what do we get for that? Literally nothing. It was absolutely a photo op for Kim Jong Un, but I digress. I think what's really interesting about this story beyond the Republican hypocrisy is that you saw Vice President Harris right alongside Joe Biden. Well, it turns out, according to the Wall Street Journal, Vice President Harris was deeply involved in these complex negotiations. Complex because they involved, again, 24 prisoner releases and six different countries. She met with the German Chancellor and the Prime Minister, I believe, yes, of Robert Gob of Golab of Slovenia. First time that US and Slovenia had discussions like on this level, it was Kamala Harris that was in these meetings with both of them. She met with the uh, the chancellor, the vice, uh, the German chancellor multiple times as far back as February. So I think what's the real story here is it's not even Biden's victory, 
It's actually Kamala Harris's victory. And I hope she is talking more and more about it as she continues to campaign. Um, and it is very interesting and, and pretty incredible that she is there receiving the American release hostages. And I, I think it's a testament to the fact that, hey, on an international level, she's got chops. But she laughs, so. Yeah. Yeah. Who cares? So uh, look, last two things here. Uh, in their hilarious alternate reality, they're like, when Trump is in charge, he's so strong, he makes all these deals to get the hostages back, except when he doesn't. Okay, and when and Trump is so strong that when he's not in charge, they return hostages right away because they think he might one day be in charge. So in other words, he gets credit for everything, no matter whether he's in office or he's not in office. And then, okay, then so how about the the way I had to give back an assassin and an arms dealer, etc. They're like, nope, he only gets the credit. He never gets any of the discredit. Right. Okay, okay. Again, if you live in a fantasy world where Donald Trump is, you know, Jesus and Einstein and Churchill combined, okay, okay, there's nothing I can do to help you. Yeah. Right. But for the rest of us, you sound ridiculous when you say these things. Yeah. Well, as you said, though. Biden gave back an assassin, whereas basically all of those 200 militants, mostly quilters, actually. Oh, it's yeah, quilting, yeah. quilting circles, you know, it's communal. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah, the right wing has been saying about the Taliban all along, we should give them their leaders back. They're really <laughs> lovely people. They do say that a lot. Right. And so, anyway. and, but, but we're, by the way, I want this to be very clear we're <laughs> consistent. We're not criticizing Donald Trump for those negotiations, and we never did. We didn't do it back then. Because in negotiations, you get something. And you give something. Yeah, that's how negotiations work. And lastly, if you're curious, why the hell was Slovenia involved? They were involved because we have a hostage that they want back, Melania. <laughs> I wondered, I knew okay, Melania okay. was going to get involved Amazing. somehow. Amazing. Anyway, so look, we've responded to the wow. idea. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.